Hello and welcome to this YouTube video on curve fitting with LM fit. In this video, I will show you how to use LM fit, a Python library for curve fitting to fit curves to data. Curve fitting is a technique of finding a mathematical function that best describes a set of data points. To get started, we will need to install LM fit. You can do this using pip the python package installer by running the following command in your terminal pip install lmfit if you are using anaconda then you can type conda install dash she conda forge lmfit to install lmfit i have already installed lmfit on my laptop so i will skip this process well you can ask the question why lmfit and how different is lmfit with scipy scipy and lmfit are both python libraries for scientific computing and optimization but they have some differences in their functionality and design goals both scipy and lmfit can fit curves but lmfit was made specifically for this purpose and has a more user-friendly interface for fitting curves than scipy lmfit provides a set of predefined models that can be easily customized and fit to data using the built-in curve fitting functions. LMFit also allows for the creation of user-defined models which can be used to fit more complex functions to data. LMFit curve fitting functions are built on top of SciPy's optimization algorithms but provide additional features such as parameter constraints, shear parameters and global optimization. SciPy on the other hand provides a more general purpose optimization framework including optimization algorithms that can be used for curve fitting. However, SciPy does not provide the same level of high level interface and predefined models that LMFit does. In summary, SciPy is a more general purpose library that provides a wide range of scientific computing tools including optimization while lmfit is a specialized library that provides a high level interface for non-linear least squares minimization and curve fitting therefore specifically for curve fitting lmfit is a better choice according to my opinion in this example we will be using lmfit to fit experimental data for the resistance of graphene as a function of gate voltage from this fit, we can extract the mobility of graphene sample. So basically, in this tutorial, we will be fitting this experimental data, which is the resistance of graphene as a function of gate voltage. Now, the resistance of graphene is given by this formula, where R is the resistance, RC is the contact resistance, L is the length of the sample, w is the width of the sample e is the electronic charge mu is the mobility n0 square is the intrinsic charge in homogeneity vg is the gate voltage cg is the gate capacitance per unit area vd is called the dirac point or the charge neutrality point where the resistance is maximum so let's fit this experimental data with this equation to estimate the value of mobility and find the goodness of the fit. So first, let's import the necessary libraries NumPy and Matplotlib and load the data. Here the data is stored in the file called graphenedata.txt with two columns. So first, let's import the necessary libraries NumPy and Matplotlib and load the data file. Now let's load the data. Now let's extract the gate voltage and the resistance data.
Now let's plot the experimental data. Let's put the X level and Y level. Okay, so let's plot it. Sorry, this should be one. Okay, so this is the experimental data. So now the goal is to fit the experimentally measure resistance versus gate voltage with the following equation, where R is the resistance. So next we will define our model function and set up our initial parameter values. So let's first import the necessary libraries. So let's define the function which we want to fit here. I call the function as mob, which is a short form of mobility. So in the argument, we give params x data equal to none. So in this example, x is a positional argument while the data array is actually optional so that the function returns the model calculation if the data is neglected. Once we have defined our model, the next thing is to set the parameters. RC is the contact resistance, mu is the mobility, N0 is the intrinsic charge in homogeneity. EPR is the dielectric constant. D is the thickness of the dielectric. L is the length of the graphene channel. W is the width of the graphene channel, VD is the Dirac point or the charge neutrality point where the resistivity of graphene is maximum. Now let's define the capacitance. Capacitance is given by epsilon 0, epsilon r by d. And the charge density is given by C, C into V divided by E, where V is measured with respect to the Dirac point. Now let's define the model. Here in this equation, I am multiplying n0 with 1 e 10 to the power 16 because the carrier density of graphene is of the order of 10 to the power 16. So 
so in this example if we do not include the data then it will just plot this equation so here we have defined the model equation now let's define the individual parameters so now in this equation we have these several parameters few of the parameters has specific values and few are fitting parameters so here we have to define all the parameters so the beauty of lm fit is that you can define the parameter values and you can give an initial guess and you can give the range of the parameter values so now let's define the parameters so first let's set up the initial parameter values Now EPR is a dielectric constant of silicon dioxide which is 3.9 and is a constant value. So that is why I put vary equals false. So for fixed parameter values, for example, if the dielectric constant EPR, the thickness of the dielectric D or the length of the sample and the width of the sample are fixed by the experimental parameters. So therefore EPR, D, L and W, we have fixed the values given by the experimental details and we have put vary equals false. So the fit will essentially change the parameters RC, N0, mu and D. Therefore, the fit will give you the optimum value of the parameters RC, N0, mu and VD. So now one important thing to note that you have to give an initial guess of the parameters which should be consistent with your experimental data. So for example, if N tends to infinity, RC tends to the saturation values. So we can guess RC by the following argument if n tends to infinity then the resistance whatever you see is basically rc similarly vd is the dirac point and the dirac point is between 0.0, .0 to 0.5 volts basically it is that gate voltage where the resistance of graphene is maximum so i have put an initial guess of 0.1 so in order to uh, converse the fit you need to give a values which are uh, in the range of the optimum parameter values if you give a random values of rc n0 mu and vd the fit will not converge and it will be a mess so once we set the initial parameters let's plot the data to check how the initial parameter guess looks this will help you to get an estimate of the values in the fitting parameters So the orange is the experimental data and the blue is our initial guess. So we set initial parameter values and bound using parameter function and define the objective function to be minimized as the difference between the data and the model. 
So now we can call the minimize function to fit our data. So now let's plot the fit and the original data. So as you can see that the red scatter points shows the raw data or the experimental data and the black solid line is the fit. As you can see it fits very well with the experimental data. So now let's check the mobility of the sample by typing result dot params new. So this will give the mobility in meter square per volt second. Now to get all the fit statistics we print result so here you can see all the fit statistics you can see all the values for example RC N0 mu VD as I told you these are the fitting parameters so these are the optimal fitting parameters and these are the standard errors in the fit since we fix the value of epr d l and w so these values are fixed and there is no error in these values so let's check the coefficient of determination that is r square value to get an estimate of goodness of fit As you can see that the value of R square is very close to 1 therefore the fit is really a good one. That's all for this video. I hope you found this video informative. Thank you for watching and I will see you in my next video.